Hi everybody, it's Wednesday, brought some goodies in, um, just been picking some dahlias up, so this is the first hand bunch of dahlias I'll be taking home, now quality wise they're not the best but they do look beautiful in any case, so they'll be getting to them, I've got a few different varieties in here, I've got the Mignon Red, I've got the Arabian Night, um, Speckled Mix, uh, Yellow Pom Pom, and uh, Double uh, Mint, I can't remember what that one was, um, Mignon, a double Mignon red. So, nice bunch of flowers there to take home for the missus. Um, I have been into the polytunnel and noticed that one of the leaks, this one here, funny enough, is, uh, is split down the down the sides and it's starting to become smelly. So it's basically starting to rot from the inside. I'll show you that now as well. So, just that was a run, so what you can see on here. Starting to split down there, and if I push my finger in, it's it's soft. So it needed pulling straight away. So I've pulled it up. But uh, this one here was it? It's the big. It's the biggest one I've grown yet. So as you can see, it's uh, there. You go. The first ever leak. First ever leak. I've grown by myself. Um, Happy with them? Fair enough, it's split and it's starting to go moldy, but I've still got plenty in there which are still going. Uh, which, once again, I'll show you either today or through the rest of the week in any case. Um, I haven't got my tape measure again because I'm forgetting it, so I can't measure it, but I will measure it when I get home. Um, but that's where that one stands. Anyways, um, I don't know whether to just peel the flags back, take it home, and may use it like the other ones, or just throw this one into the the compost heap, but either either or, we'll see what happens with it anyways. Um, I'm just doing a major tidy up at the moment, um, I've had a few days away from the allotment, um, and I've uh, I've gotten a plan action sorted out, so like I said in the previous week, I'm starting to tidy up at the top here, I want to get stuff started, stuff in motion, get stuff sorted out from top to bottom. So I'm making a start up here at the opening, so when you come in, at least it looks alright when you come in, then I'll start making my way down that way in any case. So I'll see you once I get this sorted out. Yeah, that's that section cleared off. So we've got some move, room, move, uh, got some room to manoeuvre. So there's plenty of space there. I've got some bags of tape for rubbish. I just need to sort of where I'm putting these. Um, but that's fine. Next task I'll be getting sorted is to find a place, a home for these compost bins for the time being. Because my plans have changed because of getting next door. Because once I'm getting next door, there's actually two rather large compost bins right there. So, really don't really need these anymore. So I'll have to have a think what I can do with them. If not, then I'll probably just give them away because I've got them for free. So, next job, like I say, is to get this area sorted out, get the pipework put into there, gonna get that fire moved and that moved as well. Might as well show you them while I'm here. Now, so all of these turn out to be the gladiolas for all the same color. So these are all lovely. So like I say, I'll be digging them up definitely and possibly putting some across there. Or well, I might even use a bed next year, see what happens. Um, I'll take you down the bottom and I'll show you what I've seen down here. Sunset cauliflowers that I've put in uh, for overwintering. Some haven't really done very well, some of them have. But I've also noticed that when I've temporarily covered them, butterflies are still getting in and there's cabbages. There's, uh, there's little larvae, little eggs and all sorts on these. I've just pulled two up because they were absolutely decimated by caterpillar. So, there you can see they've got there's caterpillars on here. So, I have to go around squashing all of them, see which ones I can save. I'm trying to get a better net and put across there. So, that's that one. And this one here, where I've got my swede, my Brussels sprouts and the cabbages. They're already in. There's no point in leaving the cover on the top. So I'm just pulling them off and pulling what I need. I mean, these are the caterpillar poo in there is nuts. It's crazy. There's loads and loads. So to be quite honest, the way I feel that's going to get pulled out. Cabbages can get pulled out. Swedes, I'll pull out when and if I need them. I'm on a tidying up mission now, so I'm not going to mess about with them. So they can just get pulled up. I need to have a look to see what's going on inside the cauliflowers as well, see if they've been affected. 
But that's where I stand at the minute. But I'm gonna get sorted out and get started, cracked on with the tidying up submission. So along with getting me tidying up and things done, I've been thinking on and just, as soon as I see something, doing it. Um, this is something that I've seen and I'm doing at the moment, and that's, um, I've got one of these trays which I had the sweet peas in. Um, so I had two of these, one down, down there, which didn't really produce much, and one down the bottom um, next to the shed. Now, it didn't really work with the sweet peas in here uh, this year, so I've taken them out. Uh, I'll be taking another one out as well. And what I've done is I've popped three of the um, the lavender in, so the big pots of lavender. And these here are the trailing geranium, which I took as cuttings. And as you can see there, roots are really good. Well, there they are, anyways. So all I'm doing here is the flowers. I'm putting them in. We'll see how they get on. So I'm putting one on each side, just making a little little flower box basically from the stuff that I've got. And I'll pop a couple of main, uh, normal geranium in the centre there as well. I'll put one on either end and I'll put geranium in the middle. And that should be enough for flowering anyways. But yeah, it's, it's, it's something. Uh, I do have some uh, quiblia or a quiglia or something on there as well. I might mix them up and do another one as well. Um, but that's what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, I'll show you about when I get sorted out as well. So I'll catch you in a little bit. Right, let's see where we're at. I'll give you a quick show of what I've done, basically, the minute. Um, I'm going to have a sit down. I'm uh, my back's on a little bit. But I'll start off with at the top again and I'll show you what I've done. So, as you've seen, I've tidied this section up so it looks a lot better when I come in. I've had to move that leak because you can smell it. <laughs> it really does get smelly. Inside the shed here, I've managed to locate my uh, other chimney. So I've managed to drag this in by myself. That was not light. Um, and I've got it in place, ready to go for when I swap the fires over. So that will be sorted there. So spin around. Um, go down into here. Uh, I've tidied up the pots, the spring bulb pots. Um, I've also moved the, I've moved the, um, the compost bins as well for the time being. I have given the orchard a tidy up a bit as well, pulled a lot of the weeds out. Yeah, I need to sort that fig tree out, which I'll do as soon as I finish showing you around here. So, yep, that's soon to be full of colour. Again, even more colour than what there is now. Because these, uh, these chrysanthemums are starting to bud up now as well. Uh, inside of the top greenhouse here, what I've done is, um, I've started, I've put the next lot of runners in. So this time round we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, around the back there, um, 11, so there's 11, 12 at the top, 13, so there's now 13 plants there from the runners, so that's them done and pushed down into the into the soil, um, inside of here I'm going to pull the uh, crocus out and put it outside uh, in the, I'll put it underneath the orchard, these bell poppers on here are coming away. Starting there, uh, I've had one drop off, but there's plenty more fruit at the top as well. I don't know, you can't really see much on there with the sun the way it is. I have, uh, I'm going to take three of these home because uh, Leslie's requested them, a few to put in the back garden, so I'm going to take three. I've also put three outside as well, and of course, I've done that, um, that flower bed as well. I'm still sitting picking away at these Cape gooseberries, Dave. Thanks very much for uh, that Cape gooseberry, they're really nice. I enjoy them. So I've tidied them up as well. I've been next door and I've tied the tomatoes up there just across this section here. I've also deweeded the main crop potatoes, which are next door as well. I've deweeded those. Um, looks like Ronnie's been in, cut the tops of his potatoes ready to be picked up. Uh, I've also deweeded out the strawberry bed as well down there. And I've also been across where the giant cabbages and I've started killing a lot of caterpillars. So that's as much as I've managed to get done so far today. Um, I've, walked, I've uh, fed the I've fed the tomatoes down at the bottom with tomato feed, um, and also I've fed the peppers and the chilies in the middle greenhouse there as well. Um, the next task which I'm going to get on with is I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I'll show you this this sunflowers where they're at because I'm ready to take the top the heads off to save the seed. So I'll show you that now. Apologies about the wind. Um, I'll try my best, uh, but. I haven't saved seeds from the sunflower before, but what I'm gathering and what I've seen is that once the 
the flowers start falling off. They are easy to rub your finger off like this. They start falling off, and then of course the flowers are closed and dying. And then you can take the seed and dry it out and get it prepared, ready to go for next time round. So I'll do this one at the moment. The other two aren't ready yet, but I will show you them as I'm passing. And uh, so I'm going to take the top of this sunflower off, just the head, and take it up to the top greenhouse. Okay, so I'm back in the top greenhouse, and here's the smaller of the heads. I say small, it's massive. It's the same size as my head. That's the size of the head there. So all I'm going to do is, uh, there's lots of ants and everything on this at the minute. I'm just going to go outside, I'm going to just rub all the flowers, flower, the inside the flowers off here, and see what we're left with. After I've wiped all of these off, all the flowers off, I've come back with just these little these little seeds here. So these are all seeds. Now whether or not these look a bit weird to me because they're white for a start. Now the sunflower seeds I know are black. The ones that I put in are black. So I don't know whether or not these will these will work next year. But if I do squeeze them, they feel very hollow. There's nothing in them. So I don't think this has been a success. So if I go, I'm gonna go and have a look at the other ones and see if there's anything done, uh, any difference. And uh, if not, I'll have to wait until the next time. So bear with us a second. As you can see, this one, which is this smaller one, that's something I'd be more inclined to see. The darker seed. Now, I don't know whether or not these will work or not, but I mean, let me know. Drop a message in the comments um, and let me know if, uh, if you've ever covered things like this before. Because it looks like the other two really big ones white as well so, but I think this one is the Wilco giant one which at the moment we've got the, the dark seeds on so I'm going to pull a few of these off and we'll see what they like and um, ideally they need to be left to dry in a nice dry place so I'll be leaving them in the greenhouse here so um, to dry off and um, but I'm going to pull a few of these out see what they like well, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a difficulty to try to get them out you just got to try and push them, and try to pick them out the best you can. There we go. You can't bend it. There we go, there's a couple there. There we go. So there's three there. So, save these seeds for next year if they're viable. If not, you can roast these. Now these here feel, there's a couple there that are hard. I have done a check last year, and if they were soft, it meant that they had nothing inside of them. So they weren't... No, they were no good. Yeah, that one's got nothing inside of it, so I know that that's no good. So, little squeeze, they're hard. I'll leave these in here to dry. I'll pick all the seeds out. I'll save them for next year. And we'll see if they work or not. Ideally, the ones I definitely want to work are the giant ones outside the, outside, from the one outside the house. And also these massive ones, the massive heads. So, fingers crossed, we'll see how they come and they'll get how they get on. But for me today, after me done, I'm going to shoot off, uh, see what happens over the next couple of days. Um, I'm not scheduled back off work until Sunday, so I might be down on Sunday to fill in the rest of this video. So, I'll catch you when I see you. Hi everybody, it's Friday. Um, I've come down to the garden, I've managed to get an early finish from work today. So, in three hours or so I've had early finish. Uh, I've come down to the garden to get cracked on basically it's all about saving seeds this week so I've walked in and instantly from the tidying up I did the other day it's just put a smile on my face and um, so even just turning around and seeing the gladiola and the background running the apple trees and things like that it's much better walking in here now so I'm pleased I've made a start with that the other day and um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to well, spin you around and show you just coming in um, I'm going to like say, get on with the, where the peas were, I'm going to start pulling up all of the peas um, I'll save them for seed for another time for when I get a chance to Tidy the area where the peas are so then I can get that prepared for anything if I want to put anything else in Potentially Christmas potatoes or something like that, I don't know, we'll see what happens But I'll spin you around and we'll go in through there So, like I say, just even coming in here, it's much better, it's much more tidier, I feel a lot better coming in here now um, Coming down here, got the gladiolas and things like that Everything else is happening. All these flowers, these calendula have went crazy yet again. Just taken over. So I'm debating what to do with them next year. I might not screw them. But this is the area in which I'll be sorting out today. This mess here, a mixture of different couple of things. The peas, the, the, the leeks that I put in, it's just an absolute mess in here at the moment. So I'm gonna get this sorted out now.
that's that done. So, what I'm going to do now is leave that because I'm going to put my onions in here, the winter onions. Um, I'll have to think about what I'm going to do with regards to it. Um, whether I want to put the blue down and just put them in the holes again, or if I'm just going to put a couple in at a time, I'll see what happens. But this needs to be turned over, it's already been turned over. So all I need to do now is just to rotivate it in when I get a chance. Um, but that's another job done. It's lovely crumbly. It's good soil. <sighs> Even though it is a bit wet, it's still all right. Um, means we can get in here now as well, so I can see the, the beetroot and the chilies. Now these sweet peas are still flowering, which is still crazy. I've still got sweet I haven't, I haven't touched these in weeks, weeks. But these ones on this side are starting to put up nicely, so I'll be saving them seeds and sweet peas for to go in for next year as well. And there'll just be a big mix and match all the way down the sides of the fences. Um, so I'll be starting to sow some of them from actually October, uh, October, September, October. So from next month it starts again. I've got some already set to go in the house. Um, beetroots at the minute. They're a decent size again. I can take these home if I wished. There's a nice big in there. So the bolt hardy are still doing this, so they've done alright. But the next task, which I'll get the girls to do, because the girls enjoy doing it, is to pick all of these seed pods off here. You see the seed pods, pick the big ones off. And then here will be the peas for next year. So that'll be the third year I've saved these seeds. So all about saving saving seeds for this year so i'm going to move all of this inside the shed and uh, see what else i can get on with while i'm down here this evening hello everybody it's nice and sun sunny sunday afternoon up here in the northeast sunny because it's sunny. that is a surprise of a little girl who's decided to come down and show you what to do with the peas but i'll tell you about that a little bit later on um found Another tripod. Now this was the one I was looking for previously before I bought the one from the pound shop, which is not very good. This one, you can put it on lots of things. So once again, there might be a few different camera angles I'm gonna try uh, over the coming, coming weeks, but that's for another time. Now what I've come down today for is to collect the veg for the dinner and also introduce you um, regards to more um, saving seeds. So I'm gonna get Sky, who was actually come. She, you can just see the little pink of her face there. Um, she's, I'm going to set the camera up, she's going to talk you through how to save your peas um, for seed for next year as well. So I'm going to get sorted, put a plant together, we're not here very long, and we'll get sorted out with that. So, probably leave you over for Sky as well. So, I'll leave you with it, see you in a bit. Hi everyone, I am fine and thanks for all your messages. So I'm go today I'm going to show you how to save your peas. So my dad is left some peas on the pod. To my dad's left them on the pod to leave them to dry. So, so this is what they look like. So this is what they look like at the moment. They're in their pods and dried out. And here's one. So you can see. So I'll show you. Them, I'll show you the seeds out of their pods and how to keep them for next season. So you just give them a squeeze until you've got a gap. And then you, so there they are. And then we're just going to pick them out and put them in there. And we need to do it for every one we got. Here's a little baby one. So we don't want these little baby ones. We want the big ones, like these. So, ne. So I'll put that one there. And I'm going to do the next one. So we'll put them on paper and we'll cover it with paper. So so they stay dry because if they get wet we can't use them next year this is how you save peas for next year bye so what i've got i've actually brought for a change i've brought the tape measure down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure these onions up um 
predominantly this one and this one because the other two biggest ones just spin the camera around there a little bit more so there so we'll start off with this one see what size is that now I said it was gonna be between 20 and 21 I thought so at the minute it's sitting at 20.3 I don't know if you can see that just there 20.3 on this one so that's the biggest one I've got so far it hasn't really put much on and this one here is currently sitting at 19 and a half so it's 19 and a half on this one and the rest are a bit smaller so these have slowed right down in their growth so it'll be close to time to pull them up uh, I've got one here that's split really bad at the back here so that's pretty much done this one behind here which I'll just grab these and show you so you can see at the back there it's starting to split in several places so that's that'd be no good I have actually already pre-measured um, the leaks and the biggest leak I've got is 15 inches round for circumference that's the giant and um, now some of the other lads have got theirs up to 20 21 um, I believe I saw between 17 and 20 so obviously mine are a bit smaller but they're still the bigger the biggest ones I've grown myself so I'm pleased with the way they've grown in any ways they're still growing now these will need lifting in future reference to yourself Dean these need lifting at least six at least six weeks before the shows so um, probably back end of July uh, is the end of the growing season for the onions for the for the exhibition ones anyways um, the heavy onions you can lift them show date you want to pile the weight on for them um but yeah that's where everything's standing with the leeks and the onions uh, in here at the moment i'm gonna go and pick the food for the tea now so we'll see what goodies i can find i'm about to just check on the sweet corn take some for lunch uh, and i've seen that there's sunflower even though it's starting to die off on the outside it's actually producing another sunflower from the middle i don't know if anybody's ever seen that before that's crazy but I've also noticed that the far side here there's actually more heads coming on this one so that's why it's always handy not to pull them all up because you can get additional heads on the sunflowers themselves as well but I'm going to have a look in here now to see if I can see if there's any of these sweet corn already so I've got two different varieties in here I've got Incredible um, and I've also got some of the Cedar Dave centers so let's have a look and see if what's in here at the moment. So sweet corn, you can tell when the sweet corn is done ready because these on the top dry out and they go brown or black so it's a bit difficult doing this with one hand but I'll try and peel this back so if I just peel one back we should be able to see the corn on the inside so there you go and now the top is not top section has not been pollinated so that means there's not been enough pollen put on top of it here but you can, what you can do is you can check is you can pierce the, the corn itself and if there's a milky substance come out then it's fine for taking so this one here is fine for taking so i just pull down and twist and pull there we have the first sweet corn which is not too bad I'm quite pleased with that so i'm going to see if i can get a couple of more then uh, get ready to show you all my harvest hello right okay so i've got me large amount of vegetables so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash them before I take them down so we'll give them a bit of a wash so what I've got here is I've already removed most of the roots on here so we can see in, in the entirety of what stuff I've got so I've got one white turnip decent sized white turnip I've got some standard swedes just some small ones here just give them a quick rub down. I don't want to get take them down on the dirty. There's one. Two. I've got two cabbages here as well. One curly and one normal. So one's called Orms Kirk and one's called Green Acre. Just get the knife. I'm just going to cut the base off. There we go. So there's a normal one. This is the green acre. Green acre. 
bit of success than I had last year, whereas I didn't have any last year. So, some cabbage for dinner. Good heart on that, good heart heart. And this one is the Orms cake. That's a curly one. I'll just need to chop Which the I think Mama I like to style off. Just the, chop the bottom off. Them. So we've got cabbage, we've got turnip, and these are the carrots and things that I've picked up. So we've got the parsnips. Put them inside the water. Get cleaned. And all of the greenery will be going onto the compost heap for next year. So I'll just finish off doing these bits here, then I'll show you the, the carrots and things. Okay, so I've got a handful of baby carrots basically. They're not fully matured yet, um, but they'll do for the put in for dinner today. So I'll give these a wash. Same way I did the, the parsnips, I'm going to take the tops off. Usually I don't really wash vegetables, things like uh, potatoes and stuff like that you don't wash, you just keep them, if you, if you wash the potatoes they don't last, they don't store very well. So that's why you just recommend to keep them in the earth. Now I know Ronnie next door, um, he just chops the tops off his uh, plants and leaves them in and when he needs them he'll just pick them up. So it saves having to bag them up and take them home. So if you've got the space and you're able to, just uh, buy your potatoes, it's a good idea to store them that way. So we can just chop the tops off, leave them in the ground and that's them sorted out. So that'll do for a wash off with them. I'll chop all the tops off when I'm sorted out. I've got some peas here as well from next door, which are the late sown of peas. Um, I'll take them home and I'll just uh, pop them out and cook them. Um, so that'll be going in there. Now the only things I've got left to do now is to show you the the, cabbage, the cauliflowers and the uh, the two cauliflowers I found because I found a really big cauliflower. So I'll be right back and I'll show you them. So these are the cauliflower I've managed to get. I've managed to save these two purple ones. The rest of them have sadly all bolted. So uh, I'll have to have a proper wash when they get home. But this is the biggest cauliflower I've grown yet to date. Whoa, oh, oh. And that's the biggest one I've managed to get, the biggest head I've managed to get so far. And that'll do for today's lunch as well. So, lunch slash dinner. So I haven't opened up any of these ones yet, because I uh, just guessed that they'll be fine. So let's have a look on here and see what these are like. Now some of these don't even get home, because I normally just chow on them, so do the kids. So there's the one there, they're all pretty much the same in regards to the pollination at the top. There they are there, so. You can have corn on the cob. Have corn on the cob. So I'll take a few of these for dinner today and I'll take a few for uh, a few for home for when the kids want to have. They can even try popcorn with these. I don't know if you can make popcorn with them with a variety, but uh, I'll let them have a go. Why not? If not, they'll just go go on the compost heap itself. So yep. that is the dinner for dinner the date. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five of them. And these are all the things we've got for dinner today. And these are off, off for lunch today. So. That is for lunch slash dinner. So that is all the veg that I'm taking home today. We've got turnip, we've got sweet, we've got parsnip, we've got carrots, we've got cauliflower, pickle cauliflower. Yeah, and I've also got some uh, potatoes and things at home already. Some flowers that's available in the garden. I'm going to take some of the candy as well. So, I'm going to grab some flowers, throw the flowers in, that'll be me, guy, also in front of it. So, see if you can see the top of the greenhouse. Hello again, right? Time to sign off, but just before I go, I'll show you all of the flowers which me and Sky have picked. So, just to show you a few what I'm going through here. Now, these are dahlias and gladiola. So, I'll start with the gladiola. So, we've got this is one of the gladiolas I bought. I got for 50 pence, the bulbs. Just a nice red one. There was unfortunately it snapped at the bottom, so I need to take it in anyways. Um, so I just lifted that up as well. And the other gladiolas that we have, I've got these. 
they're the dahlias, so they're from the cuttings of the one which I really like. I believe they are, anyways. Um, we've got the other test. The other gladiolas here, oh, very nice. of course, are these ones, which are beautiful. They're fantastic. I don't know where I got them from. I can't remember now, but they are great. I'm going to put them together. Um, so that's they're the two types of gladiola that we've got. Of course, I've uh, taken these two as well. So as you can see, they're they're absolutely fantastic. They're aren't they? Aren't this guy? Yeah. So, a smell test. Just pop them on that side as well. And these little make a lovely. Out of ten, that is. A well, they, don't really sm they don't really smell, but they're so just for visual. About if so the three. So the dahlias that we've got are these ones. So it's a nice deep red one. We've got, I've got these one here. I can't remember the names of them all, so I apologise in advance. That's a pretty one as well, and uh, Ooh, that's, that's, that's a, very strong. That's a rather, it's a rather large one as well. That looks very these, strong. Mm -hmm, we've got these pom pom yellow ones. Oh, we've got a lot of these pom pom yellow ones from the pom pom mix packet. Of course, got the Mignon Red, which you've seen me mention a few times over. We have Speckled Mix, which are these ones here. So you can see the different varieties and the, the speckled on there. I know they're fully open, but uh, they will be by the time I get them picked and get them home and things like that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got these small ones here as well, which I can't remember the name of, of course. Um, all them daffodils. So they're pretty, no, they're dahlias. They're all dahlias. These are all dahlias here, which I'm showing everybody and I'll have to see it and they've got one here which is the cactus variety which I showed you last week I believe it was got a few I don't know how I'm gonna arrange all of these so but that's a cactus variety there and last but not least my favorite so this one is my favorite one this one's the one that's on the profile picture that uh, goes on there like that. Leslie's head like that so uh, that is I want to do it lovely I don't know what it's called, but I'm pleased I found the plant. I'm pleased it's starting to grow back as well. And you think that? So, very beautiful sky. So that's me and Sky all done today. We're going to go home and get dinner sorted out. So thanks everybody for watching. And I'm going to put my feet up. Sky's going to put my feet up as well. So everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks to all, everybody, all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers. Um, next month, it's going to be a busy month with all the shows we're going to, so there's going to be plenty of footage coming up. Uh, get to meet a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Um, so I best get my phone charged up <laughs> if I want to take it away with us. <laughs> so uh, plenty of exciting things to come over the next month with the shows and everything. I'm looking forward to them. Um, we'll see how things go over the next coming weeks as well. And if you've not subscribed, can you please smash the subscribe button? Smash the subscribe button, <laughs> as the kids say. But yep. As Jordan says. All right. So see you all next week. Bye! Bye.